everyone. This is Jennifer with Prairie Hawk Botanica, and we are out on the wilder end of my property to talk about a medicinal plant that grows very well out here. This is horse mint. Um, the, I believe the genus name for this is Monarda punctata. Um, but it's in, if you can recognize that, that genus name, Monarda, this is actually a relative of bee balm. Yeah, that one that you grow in your garden. And as such, it has similar properties. This particular stand, the reason why I'm out here is because I, I wanted to show you that they, it can grow in increasingly uh, large stands. And this particular one is actually quite high. The, the tallest um, the tallest plants are a good four and a half feet high. And the other thing you can see is that the bees and wasps and even a, a ladybug in the distance there really, really love it. Um, it's a funny plant because the flowers are actually very small and uh, not <laughs> what you think. These whitish looking uh, bracts are not the flowers. The flowers are the yellowing part. Where's my finger? Right in there. Right there. And because this particular stand is actually just about on its way out, I grabbed some fresh ones to showcase for you. So let's see if we can get those in focus. This is what bee balm looks like when it's freshly bloomed. The pink that you see are actually the leaf bracts which go from a green to this pinky color and then over time we'll turn the white of the ones that you just saw behind you. The flowers themselves are white in color. See that? Let me see if I can get that in better focus if I can just get the fresh stuff to lean up against the old stuff then we can zoom in on it there we go and the flowers are these things in here the unspectacular looking white part you know and it'll turn yellow and kind of brown as the flower goes to seed um, and uh, and is great for drying and using medicinally, and I'll tell you how. Similar to bee balm, um, horse mint is high in thymol, among many other things. And so it's going to have similar medicinal properties. Its flavor is very, very strong. Um, on a par with oregano, but stronger. <laughs> and as such, it has been used for a lot of years as a flavorant in uh, salads, teas, uh, candies, if you can believe that. Although I suspect its partner lemon mint is more uh, what you're looking for if you want to stick it in candy. Um, and as a spice, you know, an oregano tasting uh, spice, which is uh, pretty cool. It doesn't take much, so a little goes a long way with horse mint. So you definitely want to experiment and, and find the, the combination that works best for you. And it has also been used because of its um, antimicrobial, antifungal properties. It's used in poultices and uh, balms and in various treatments to assist with, um, with wound care. It's a very, very antiseptic. Um, and in treating fungus problems inside the body. Candida sufferers, this is your plant. Um, it has also been used for its uh, cough and cold fighting properties, you know, similar to a lot of plants in the mint family. But this one has diaphoretic properties, meaning it'll make you sweat. So native Indians here in, uh, in the Americas have used it to make a sweating tea um, to help you kind of sweat out um, a fever or a cold that you're suffering and it doesn't take much it, it's a pretty weak tea it only takes a few flowers or leaves to uh, to produce a, a very strong tasting tea and so for for this cold fighting reasons uh, I often add it to um, syrups and things like that and I'll dry some up and keep it on hand to put into teas um, it also makes a really good mouthwash those antiseptic qualities can help with uh, gingivitis and cavities and things like that that's where you're just gonna soak it in some water and uh, keep that in the fridge for a couple of days and just rinse out your mouth with it just like you would any other mouthwash it's really good for that it's very flavorful too so it'll freshen up your breath um, and it also can go into certain preparations like fire cider which i'll be covering in a future video i like to add wild plants whenever i can into my various concoctions and um, horse mint is really good in syrups that deal with cold teas um ouch fire ant and where was i before i got bit um 
teas and mouthwashes, things like that. And again, as I mentioned, because of, uh, because of its antiseptic properties, it's also good in wound washes, things of that nature. And you can also use it internally to help fight fungal overgrowth. Yeah, inside and out. You can actually dry it, you know, and add it into balms or use it uh, like in a crushed powder over a uh, ringworm and things like that. And you can use it internally, internally to try to help um, tamp down that overgrowth of fungus. It's a really great, great plant to have around. Take a look for it. If you don't have it growing wild, you can actually buy and plant seed. It will have very similar needs as the decorative bee balms that you've seen in catalogs and at the stores. Okay, there you go. Take a look at that. And look out for horse mint, Monarda punctata, I think. All right.